Since the release of the Mini 3 Pro, DJI have released the official SDK for the Mini 2, allowing it to work with third-party apps for flight planning. This is cool. I've already run tests with a couple of apps and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do this for free. Although the results I have so far have been pretty good, I wouldn't recommend this for professional use cases. I will, however, in future videos, explain the use cases and benefits of mapping. So subscribe for future videos. So in today's video, I'm actually gonna go over the app itself, preparing a flight mission, doing the flight mission, and then uploading those photos to create a 2D and 3D map. All right, the first thing that you want to do is go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download Map Pilot Pro. And then once you've downloaded it, we click open. And the first things we want to do here is just go to your settings. And then we want to change the model to Mini 2, which has already been set for me. We want to make sure the data capture is in JPEGs. The image frame rate SD card will set to two seconds. Inherit camera settings can be turned on. If you want to use metric or imperial units, I've set mine to imperial because I like flying with feet on altitude. And return to home offset, we want to set to zero. And that is pretty much everything else. Yeah, obviously slow aircraft according to light conditions will turn that on. Other than that, we're good. We don't really need to adjust any other settings. There's no need to worry about file manager, quick map, or data transfer. We won't be needing those for our mapping purposes. New mission is obviously to create a new mission, and mission plans is anything you have saved. And today we're going to create a new mission. So if we just click on that, and as you can see here, this is where we currently are. This is uh, Moni Park in Cyprus. So let me just go over the map. So at the bottom here with these trees, this is obviously like your data sets or your profiles of your land. Obviously See, it should say SRTM as your default and that is fine. You click and then just drag to slide down. And if we work our way clockwise, we have a maps here. So you've got base map, follow to show your GPS location, or you can search a location and then we can just slide that out. And above that gives you your statistics when you start creating your map. The little arrow here is if you want to exit and if you tap the top bar, it gives you your options to create a new map. Now, obviously you've got normal mission, which creates a normal mission, which is what we're going to be using. Grid is if you want to do something more thorough, you won't really need it in this case, but for 3D models, it might be slightly better to get more photos at different angles. Linear as if you're mapping long distances, for instance, like roads or pipelines. But again, this is something you won't be doing with a Mini 2, but if you want to test and that's it. Sampling and spot, we won't be covering. Overlap is how much overlap of the picture you were, you're going to be taking with your Mini 2. We're gonna keep it as default around the 80% mark. You pretty much want around 60 to 80% overlap in your images. Altitude is how high you're gonna be flying the drone. Normally you would check this beforehand by just sending your drone up and seeing what the highest obstacle is. Speed, we'll set this to auto, but again, this will depend how much of the land you are capturing and it will determine the speed automatically. This will vary with height as well. This is your flight time. This obviously will be battery limited if you're going to be, if you're taking a data set that's quite large, you might need more than one battery. Uh, rotation is the rotation of the flight path and then the offset is how much offset there's going to be. So to create a map, all you have to do on Map Pilot Pro is just hold down to create the first point and you need to create three points to map an area. So I'm just going to roughly put in three points. And now we're just going to adjust our map area to our desired map location. And yeah, and bear in mind, because there is a property right here, we're just gonna make sure we don't go a flight over their property. This is part of the park, that should be okay. And I'm happy with that. Now to create the map, we just double tap again. And as you can see, this is the flight path currently. I'm gonna move our purple dot, which is our home location, to where I'm currently located on the basketball court. And now we're gonna set our parameters. So we want a normal mission. And as you can see on the left-hand side, you can see the area, the distance, the proposed flight speed, the duration it's going to take, the number of batteries you're gonna be needing, your memory, your images you're gonna be taking, etc. So this is pretty useful, but let's just keep it around 100, 100 feet for now, but I'll double check this before. Obviously the speed is already determined by the altitude and overlap is fine. And then the rotation. If you notice, there is a green and red dot. These are your start and end points. You can adjust these by just moving the slider or using the plus and minus icons. I've just rearranged it so the start point is by that tree over there. Obviously you can see how much offset you're gonna have, whether you're gonna, it's gonna take a lot longer and it's gonna take a lot less by having a, a lower offset. 
so you can see the grid lines is spaced out a lot more. We're just gonna keep this in the middle and that is fine. Overlap, again, we'll make adjustments. You'll see how much overlap as you decrease and increase the sliders. So we're gonna just keep this at 80% again. And the same with the track, that's exactly the same. We're just gonna keep this on default or 80%. Okay, the only thing left to do is obviously just save your mission. So you can see the little floppy disk icon. We're just gonna click save and you can name this. I'm just gonna put this as, there we go. It's been saved. And let's get to the next part of checking the altitude and then we'll set the drone up to fly to do the mission. Okay, you won't need ND filters uh, for your drone when doing this. I'm just gonna turn on my controller and I'm also gonna turn the drone on. And the first thing we're gonna do here is from this exact spot is fly the drone to determine our highest obstacle height first. So you don't have any crashes. The Mini 2 doesn't have sensors. So we need to make sure that we're not gonna have any accident. So I'm just gonna use the regular fly app just to send the drone up and determine how many feet or meters depending what units you want to have, check your obstacles. So while the drone just picks up here, GPS signal, and let's set flight. So we're just gonna take a look around. We can see we're pretty much clear of objects at 100 feet high. I don't think the drone's gonna crash at all. And you wanna keep your camera level to see if the drone's gonna hit any objects at that distance. So I think we're good here and we can land the drone. Okay, now that we've checked our altitude, we're gonna go back into map. Pilot Pro, we'll go to Mission Plans, and then we're gonna open up the mission that we have created. And as you can see here, there's your mapped out area. And you'll see a few more icons here now, but uh, to make changes to the map, all you have to do is click the lock icon to unlock it on the top left of the screen. You'll see we have a couple more menu items here. So on the left-hand side, you'll have here a DJI login authorization to interact with the fly zones. Obviously, I know in this area we don't have uh, fly zones here, but that is an option for you to do. I'm just gonna click cancel. The bottom left, we have our drone's camera angle, and you can even make adjustments to the camera, but we're gonna keep everything on auto because you don't need to worry about cinematic settings here. Just above that on the left-hand side, you have like your, your speed and your altitude uh, and your flight time, etc. And the plane icon or drone icon will simply just start the mission. And then we know for a fact, that if we click on the left-hand side again, we know this is gonna take about five minutes to map and it's only gonna need one battery. At the top here, we can see we got a 100% battery here for the drone. We got 86% battery on the iPad. We even got 86% battery in the controller. We have 16 satellites and I think we're good to go. So all they left to do is just set the drone off. So I'm going to click the plane icon and if you wish, you could simulate it beforehand, but we've done all our tests. We're just gonna click upload and then it's just gonna give us some stick commands here. So it's basically giving you a warning saying it's taking control of everything. The aircraft will hover and then it will return to home. So we've obviously set everything. Terrain awareness, we're just depending on the terrain. So whether if you're going up or down, it will follow the terrain. So we can just click yes here and then we can click start. Now we just have to keep an eye on the drone. So while the drone is flying, your job is essentially just to keep an eye on the drone, making sure it's not gonna hit any obstacles, no birds come into contact with it, but I think we'll be fine here. And as you can see here, you can see the specs on the right-hand side, how fast it's flying, its altitude. You can even see a picture of what the drone's capturing. And even on the main screen, you can see all those little dots it's taking is every single photo. Now we wait while it maps. Okay, the drone seems to have completed. It's given us a message and it's making its way back to land. I'm just gonna take over here to land quicker. Okay, that is it. Let's head back to the computer where we can upload these images and create a 2D and 3D map. Okay, we are back from the park. I have my SD card here from the drone and I have my MacBook Pro. 
and this is the next step for creating the map. So we're gonna plug this in. So we have our files here. I am going to create a, so while those transfers, we wanna open up a browser of your choice. We're gonna to go to Maps Made Easy and you wanna log in. We wanna to go to Maps New. We wanna to go to Use DJI Workflow. So now it's saying select one of the images from the files the DJI Mini 2 had taken from the mapping. Now, because it's free, you can use ASAP, expedited or normal. For this video, I'm just gonna click normal just so you guys can see the process. It really doesn't take that long, but this is something to expect when you, if you do go down the route of mapping. It isn't something that's instant because it does take a while to stitch all the images together. Uh, process re native resolution, that's fine. If you want any other file types, you can click these here. And we don't think we need anything else you can keep these here and then you're just going to click name and verify data so just name map and then you can confirm this as well now it's asking you to upload every single image that the drone has taken from the map so i'm just going to click upload and we said from 137 to 230 so i'm just going to click upload and then if you scroll down you can see all the images taken by the drone and don't forget we took a cross pattern so we should get a better uh, overlap and a better 3D image of the area. So I'm just gonna hit upload and now we wait. Okay, so let's go back to Maps Made Easy and we can see our finished map. So we just log in as normal, we go to Maps, we go to Complete. So what I'm going to do now is just click on Moni Park, that's the one we created today. And as you will see, if we were to use Google Maps, you can see here the resolution won't be great. Like there's nothing, no, not much detail there. If we click the map that the drone has taken, we can see here we have a pretty good high resolution image here. And we can zoom all the way in, but it's done a pretty good job. It's obviously missing some trees, but that could be an altitude thing. Maybe I need to fly higher for it to capture it properly. So far, this is actually pretty good. And even if we select here on the top right, the Moni Park elevation, it will even give you an elevation guide so you can see, obviously, I was standing in the lower part and then it's a bit higher up where the amphitheater is. And on the left hand side, you have some tools where you can just draw a polyline, a polygon. You can draw rectangles, a circle. You can place markers here and then you can even delete those. So I think we could even measure. So if we click the measuring line here, the polyline, we can see that we get roughly around 75 feet. It's not going to be 100 percent accurate, but to get some form of measurement there, it's actually pretty decent. So if we scroll down the page here, you obviously you get a public link here where you can uh, share that with someone. You get your coordinates here and that will be take, that comes from the drone. You have timestamps here where you uploaded the files when the project started, when the project finished, etc. So you have all this information around here, which is great. And on the right hand side, you even have uh, downloadable files and it gives you a date here where you can download them by and then the reason why Maps Made Easy is free is because of storage space. Can you imagine they stored all these files? It's gonna take up a lot of space. Yeah, they give you one month to download the files, which is great. We even have a 3D view. Now you could have selected other boxes to get those 3D files if you wish and you have a use case for them, uh, but I didn't select it as this is just for testing purposes. But if we click the 3D view here, and as we can see here, just by using the touchpad, we actually have a 3D model of Moni Park. Now, again, you can notice it's not perfect. Pop tops of trees are missing. Again, that could be the height at which you map with the drone. You may need to rise, raise the height a little bit further. Not a bad job. And this was all for free with a DJI Mini 2, a base level drone, an entry level drone. And the Mini 3 can't do this yet with the automations. You'd have to do everything manually. Now, before I end the video, I have tried an alternative piece of software called the Drone Link. But what I'll do is I'll create a separate video for that. The principles will be very similar, but we should cover that app as well. It isn't free, it's a paid app, but I will cover it in a future video. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to give it a like. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. Is this something that you'll be trying out with your DJI Mini 2? And if you're already using mapping software, which platform are you using and why? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.